Hello, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Alicia, but as always, you can call me Crafty Owl. I already see some familiar faces over in the chat. Thank you so much for being here. And I look forward to meeting some new crafty friends as well today. Um, make sure if you have a question to go ahead and put that over in the chat. And it, it's helpful if you put the word question before it. Ardith is in the background. Well, not behind me here, but she's in the background of this picking those out so I can answer your questions this morning. Make sure to let us know too where you're watching from. Hello, good morning. So if you haven't seen my presentation yet, because I know it just went live for many of you earlier, um, I used ephemera for my card, just quick and easy cards. And I do see that Ardith has a question for me. What are your favorite techniques? I'm a big fan of making cards with pattern paper and using sketches. So if you're familiar with me, you know about my sheet load of cards. Otherwise, other techniques, I love stenciling, especially layered stencils where you put, you know, three or four layers together and you create a scene. So those are some of my favorites. Let me know yours over in the uh, chat. Um, I spy color cubes in the background. What do you use them for? Color inspiration, no doubt. If it's a rainbow, I can put together inks. But if it's anything other than that, I have a hard time picking out inks that go well together. So I can just sometimes I'll use like a random number generator and just pick a card out like that and just go to town. And that's also what I like to use with my layered stenciling. Thank you. Do you ever make your own pattern paper? Yes, I guess as close as I could make my own. I will use stamps and do like an all over, all over background and either color it in with like just like stenciling or sorry, ink blending the whole thing or coloring in the images. Also with some of those layered stencils, it does kind of make like a background paper. Thank you. All right, can you tell us about the freebie you are offering? So I sometimes get mixed up between the bundle item and the freebie, but I can show you as long as I don't leave the studio what I'm offering. So hope here is a look at the cards that I created for the video. I showed you just how to easily quick, easily create quick, cute, and easy holiday cards with pre-made ephemera just by ink blending the background. And I used my freebie, which is a like a Christmas or holiday sentiment printable that has three different pages with different sentiments and different fonts. So you do have to sign up for my email list and then it should automatically come to you. Thank you. I get back to my face camera. Sue, question, do you make your own ephemera too? Thank you, Sue, for that question. I guess you could say I make my own ephemera when I would um, stamp and color an image and then cut it out. That's probably the closest I get to it. But another thing, if you, you could definitely do that to make your own ephemera for these cards. But also if you have scrapbook paper, like especially those collection kits, sometimes they'll have a sheet of items that you can cut apart, like different images from that collection. And you could make your own ephemera that way too. Thank you. Catherine, I don't have ink blending brushes. What can I use to blend a background like you did? Well, I definitely prefer ink blending brushes. But if you don't want to use a stamp pad, and I think I did show this in my bonus class, you could definitely use like watercolor or water brush pens, anything that can get you a little coloring in the back. Now you might have... Mm, oh, wrong drawer, sorry. You might have stuff like this, maybe from other crafts you've done, and you could try that too. So just use what you have. Now that you mentioned it, what's your bundle contribution? So thank you for that great question. If you did sign up for the bundle, I have a bonus 
exclusive class that will never be released to the public where I show you how to take the same concept I did for my presentation, but step the cards up just a little bit. And this is usually with maybe one, usually maybe two other items like embossing folders or masks. So I've already seen some of you watching it and commenting it and I'm glad you're enjoying it. Thank you. Is it Elricroc? Sorry, or I. How do you come up with the idea of sheet load of cards? How did you? So this is a question I get a lot. Thank you. So years ago, like I told you before, I love pattern paper and I love to use sketches. Well, years ago, and still kind of to this day, one sheet wonders are a big thing. And it's where you would take one piece of 12 by 12 pattern paper, cut it up in lots of different shapes and create a variety of card layouts. Well, when I find a sketch I like, I like to stick to it. So I started figuring out how many cards I could make, you know, if I cut the pattern paper for one sketch. And I had to come up with a catchy name for it. So it is sheet load instead of another maybe inappropriate word for a lot. And it used to be 10 to 12 years ago, it was an online e-zine, if you remember those, and I just put it out through my blog. But then I brought it back a couple years ago to my YouTube channel, and I do a free one each month for my subscribers. Thank you so much for that question. Sean, are cards using ephemera considered one layer cards? Well, Sean, they're pretty, like if you don't pop anything up, and, you know, like my sentiments, I did pop them up and put them on a different piece. So technically, because we saw that ephemera on there, I would say it's not a single layer card. But it's pretty much as close as you can get to single layer without actually being one layer, just because you do have that extra piece of ephemera. Thank you. Oh, okay, Margaret totally unrelated to the class. Can you tell us how you made your, my, your magnetic die board? How did you mount it? Amazing. Well, Margaret, that again is another um, question I get a lot. So I did prepare today and I made a video a few years ago on the basics of how I put it together. So on my YouTube channel, which is Call Me Crafty Al, if you go to my community tab, I did make a post last night with a link to that video. You might have to scroll down one post to find it, but it gives you all of the details. Um, it is large magnet sheets on a dry erase board from Walmart. And how did I mount it? I don't mount things. My husband did it. You know, it's just screws or something. Whatever came on the back of the dry erase board to mount it. Thank you. Melody. Can I use a watercolor wash behind my ephemera instead of the ink pad? You definitely can, Melody. Um, I've done this before in the past, and yes, watercolor wash works excellently. I hope you'll give that a try. Thank you. Arlene, a makeup wedge or sponge works for blending or chair or a chair leg felt adhered to the bottom of a little pill bottle. Well, great. That's going to help our friend out earlier. Yes, thank you so much, Arlene, for sharing that. Love it. Desta Lou, I recognize that name. If we are already subscribed to your newsletter, what is the procedure for getting the sentiment freebie? So Desta, go ahead. You'll still go to the website like I give you instructions for and sign up for my newsletter. If things don't work out like they should, because it, it should still send you automatically the link or the email. If it doesn't, just reach out to me and I will get that sent to you because I can look at my email list and then send that to you. Thank you. Great question. Joyce, how did you get the name Crafty Al? Well, it's kind of a quirky story, I guess. So back in the 80s, I think it was Paul Simon had a song, You Can Call Me Al. Well, my name is Alicia, but at one of the jobs I had when I was younger, one of the guys there called me Al, and I just loved it. So like that song kind of popped into my head, you can call me Al, but then I wanted to add crafty, so I snuck that in there. Thank you, Joyce. K Motto, another recognizable name. Thank you for being here. Is there a card making technique you haven't tried that you 
tried yet that you would like to. There is, and I believe there are some summit presenters who are sharing about it, and that is a gel plate. And I know I think that's one of Ardeth's favorites. I have one. My sister gave it to my daughter. My daughter will let me use it at any time, but I just haven't tried it yet. So thank you. Yeah, maybe I'll do it soon after the summit. Tiffany, hello, Tiffany. Do you have a favorite brand of pattern paper? When I, when I go to my local scrapbook store, which let's give like some jazz hands to any local scrapbook stores that are still in business. I love to go there and look at the actual paper. I find myself like, you know, I just walk around and kind of see what grabs my attention. I often reach for Cartabella, Echo Park, um, Minté. That Minté is usually not my style, but I swear like half the paper I pick out is from Minté. And then another one recently I discovered, I believe it's called P13. And I think it's an international company. And I've been grabbing some of theirs as well. Thank you, Tiffany. What's the counter thing in the background? <laughs> okay. So um, it's, it's kind of a funny story and it is new. So if you've ever seen social media counters online, like they're made by Smurl, S-M-I-I-R-L, well, they don't make one that's already pre-programmed for YouTube and they're quite pricey. So I wanted to make my own. So this is actually, it's for school where it tells like the place values and it had two sides. So I just... Um, I just altered it. So I like to check every once in a while to see how many subscribers I have. And I just flip those over. So this cost me about $15 versus 600. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Sally, looks like you're a Hamilton fan. I definitely am a Hamilton fan. Yes. And you can't over at my, my right. I have all the Hamilton pop figures too. So yes, I am definitely a Hamill fan. <laughs> Let me know, Sally, if you are over in the comments. Lisa, what do you do with your cards? Thank you, Lisa. That is a popular question. So I do make quite a few each month, especially with the sheet load, because it usually gets me like six to 12 cards at a time. Um, I have channel memberships, and one of the levels I send a card out to each month. So I do send quite a few out that way. Now I do purposely try to make my sheet loads so I can send them out the same month. Um, I used to give some to my mom and she would take them to her local retirement center and her card ministry at church. But unfortunately, I can't do that anymore. So I'm trying to find another place maybe here local to me where I can share the joy with my cards. Thank you, Lisa, for your question. Joyce, welcome. Besides making cards, do you do any other kind of crafting? Besides paper crafts, not really anymore. You know, sometimes I'll do stuffed envelopes, which aren't cards, but they're still paper crafts or sets of tags. I used to growing up, I love to cross stitch and I love to help my mom sew her stuff that she would make. Um, usually she, like if she made like a 3D pumpkin out of fabric. I always got to stuff it and I enjoyed that, but not so much anymore. Thank you, Joyce. Do we have another? Here we go. Where do you look for inspiration? I spend probably too much time on Instagram. That, you know, and like scrolling through all the Facebook card making groups. Sometimes I will see an ad or like a completely different layout. Like it could be the layout of a, of a page on a magazine or colors from that. I find inspiration in different places, but I do love to check out Instagram. Thank you. Margaret, stuffed envelopes sounds neat. They are pretty fun, Margaret. I don't have the ones I've made because I send them out, but it's basically you make kind of an envelope from one 12 by 12 sheet of paper. And then you can put stuff in the recipient, like pieces of ephemera or, you know, like small pieces of pattern paper, gems, sequins. And then it's just a fun little paper crafty surprise. Thank you. 
did you make your apron? I did make my apron and I designed the logo, which if you are a channel member, you do have access to it on our monthly blog. But I had HTV Ront. They sent me one of their auto heat presses to try out. And this is what I made with it. And this is the first thing I made. And I was pleasantly surprised how well it worked out. Thank you. Sharon, what do you put your card in to keep them before mailing out? Um, I'll go grab one super quick. All right, I'm back. So I just get these. I think they're from clear bags or clear envelopes.com. And I just put my card right in there. And then I have a card rack that's in front of me and I just keep them in there. Thank you. Audrey, how do you organize projects? Well, I'm not sure, Audrey, if you mean like before I do them or afterward or my or my products, but I think you would have said that. So beforehand, a lot of what I do each month is sheet loads. You know, I just keep the most recent printout handy to me on this side. And I do keep my pattern paper pretty organized. So it's easy to grab. But recently I did get the Trinity Stamps um, card maker sketchbook. So now I have been kind of sketching out my ideas in that kind of pre planning, pre planning my products and colors I'm going to use. I hope that answered it. If not, let me know if you need to know something specific. Thank you. Sherry, I signed up for your newsletter, but when I try to confirm it, I keep getting an error message. It says source not found. Send me an email, Sherry. You should be able to reply to the one that gave you the link and I will get you hooked up. Thank you. How do you clean your blending brushes? Um, oh, and by the way, hello, Choose Joy with Carmen. Um, I usually keep, I just have a tea towel that's right under my work surface. And I usually just rub my brush on that until it stops putting color. Um, sometimes if I want to decorate the inside of a card, I might clean off my brushes in there just to add some extra color. Thank you, Carmen. Deanna. Best craft room organizing tip. Well, I like for my ink pads, I'll just tell you kind of my, oh, my theory. Um, and then you can choose bins or whatever you like or will fit in your stuff. But for my ink pads, I have my key ring here that are in color order. But when I store them, when I actually put them in my organizer. I put them in alphabetical order. For me, it's super easy to be like, oh, sour gummy. And then I can just go through the alphabet and find it. So that's one thing that recently I implemented that I really like. Thank you, Deanna. Okay, Mado, do you have a favorite go-to color combo? Is there a combo you want to try that you haven't yet? My favorite combo is always a rainbow, no matter if it's like an, a normal rainbow or like a fall rainbow definitely like to get all those colors in there and i don't know that i have a color combo i haven't tried yet but i am heading to stamp joy in october and my daughter wants a yellow to green ink blend for her background and i've never done that that i remember so we're going to give that a try thank you maureen hayes what's your favorite non-crafting hobby probably reading I don't do it as much as I would like to anymore, but yeah, I definitely love reading. Thank you for that question. Stargazer, I know you may have very few scraps with a sheet load effort, but how do you organize the ones you do have and how do you make sure you use them? Great question. I used to keep every single pattern paper scrap I had in anticipation that I was going to use it. Um, I found, though, that what I had was just a pile of pattern paper scraps. So now I really do try to use up as much as I can decorating the inside of my cards. But really, I, I don't keep them anymore. I do try to use them right away. Now, for cardstock, I keep... I have these photo boxes, and I have 5x7 and 4x6, and I... This obviously isn't good because I took those out. But in my larger ones, I would do my white and off-white. 
And then for kind of each of the color families or the neutral, I have a four by six. So, you know, if it's like two by two or bigger, I do try to keep it. And then they're just right here below me, easy to grab when I need it for a sentiment or like a little die cut tag or something. Thank you. Teresa, hello. Fresh and rude with fresh and renewed with Teresa wants to know, how do you keep your craft room so neat? Because I am in mine daily. It is always a mess. I am in my craft room daily as well to Teresa. Um, I used to create, 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 never clean up. And it stressed me out. I had piles of stuff falling over and I couldn't find anything. Um, then I don't know, it's been maybe, maybe a year, year and a half. I tried to pick up after every one or two projects. So like today, when I came live, I spent 20 minutes, put stuff away and it looks like this. Now, don't get me wrong. I do have a little pile here and a little pile here, but I do just try to pick up a lot more frequently than I used to. Thank you, Teresa. Ruth, can you cut anything besides paper or cardstock vellum with normal dies or does it have to be the multimedia dies? Ruth, I would say give it a try. I know that those are usually what I stick to. Sometimes if you have the right type of felt, you might be able to cut it with a normal die, you know, like one of the thinlets. But yeah, I mean, try it. I just wouldn't cut anything like they have some of that like chunky glitter paper. You know, you might, I'd say try everything, but you don't want to do anything that might hurt your dyes and keep them from cutting your regular paper. Thank you, Ruth. Top three favorite crafting tools from stress-free card making. Um, my paper trimmer, which this one is no longer produced and I have had tons of paper trimmers and it is my ultimate favorite. My Misty, I could like could not stamp without that anymore. And I do use lots of different kinds of adhesive, but this right here is probably my third. It really helps since I do make so many cards with the economical tape. Thank you. Great question. All right, Norma, I am new to a lot of the card making techniques and have purchased many supplies to where I now feel a little overwhelmed and don't know where to begin. Do you have any suggestions? Norma, I think there are so many of us out there who have fallen into that same trap and it can get overwhelming. I totally feel that. I would focus on grab one stamp set and just make something with it or grab a piece of pattern paper and make something with it. And maybe just doing those little things, it will maybe make it seem a little less overwhelming. And yeah, it it's hard for all of us. I will tell you that, you know, and kind of find out what you really do enjoy and then focus on that in the future, if that helps. Sorry, I hope that helps. Thank you, Norma. That was a great question. Do you have any crafty quirks, things you like that others don't, or vice versa? Well, I am, and if you might know, like, I am pretty structured. Like, in the rest of my life, it's a little chaotic, but when I craft, I usually like a formula, you know, and that's probably why Sheetload of Cards is right up my alley. Now, I have been trying to branch out and get a little inky. But yeah, probably I'm a little structured. I could probably be a little bit more free flowing when I create. Thank you. Stargazer, do you prefer tape to wet glue? Are there times when one is better than the other? So if I'm putting paper on paper and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it down correctly the first time, I use my ATG like 90% of the time. Now, if I want to put a flat back pearl on something, or vellum, I like to use it on there. Things that might be a little slick, I will use liquid glue. I also use the liquid glue when I might have to have a little wiggle room or wiggle time before that dries. Because sometimes with those tape runners, once it's down, it's down. I think there are diff definitely applications for both of them. Thank you. It's, oh, 
it's time to wrap up guys. Well, thank you again so much for being here. If you do have any other questions for me, make sure you can leave it in the Facebook group. You can tag me on Facebook. I'm at crafty Al. Otherwise the email you get with the link, you can definitely reply to that and ask me your questions. Thank you so much guys for joining us. Have a great and crafty day and enjoy those presentations.